pop a med pack. Look, I have 57 med packs. 57. And I've only played for a day. I bet you guys are low on stim packs. I'm wondering how the heck did he pull that off? Greetings, Vault Citizens. Johnny5 Alive here, and welcome back to another Fallout 76 tips and tricks guide video. In today's video, we're going to be going over the medic build. It's my current build, and I'm going to show you how to efficiently create the best medic possible in Fallout 76 to keep your teammates alive, and it is dire and great for endgame and team play. So stay tuned, and let's check it out. All right, everybody, if you guys enjoyed these videos, please be sure to smash that like button and subscribe for more Fallout 76 tips and tricks videos. Got a bunch on the channel already, so go check them out and be sure to stay tuned for more in the future. So I decided I wanted to make a, a comprehensive guide to my medic build because it's working out really great for me and my team. It's so good to have a medic on your team, and it's something that not everybody wants to focus on. But me personally, like some people are playing the greedy approach where they want to be good with all these certain specific weapon types, but this actually works out to be the best in terms of self-gain beneficial. While you are doing the thankless job of healing your team, you're also uh, reaping the rewards for it. There is a huge upside to being the medic. So we're gonna go over all that stuff today and explain why you get a whole bunch of benefits for being the medic, all that good stuff. So let's jump into it. All right, first of all, I wanna show you guys my character. I am level 35 after a day and a bit of release, and I'm gonna to show you what I've done to make my medic the way he is and then what cards I'm going to swap out for endgame. I'm going to have to pull up the perk builder online to show you the finished character at level 50, the certain subtle adjustments from leveling up to endgame, what you want to switch out and where you want your special to end up by endgame and then what's what skills I used first. So just to give you an overall idea of what the medic is and how you're going to kind of reap rewards and benefit from being a medic, we're going to go over the, the base structure. So you're you're basically a strength, charisma, heavy build, and then a little bit of everything else near endgame. Now, the benefits of strength are pretty self-explanatory if you're a hoarder. Pack Rat reduces the junk of all items by 75%. You can hold a lot of junk. And then Strong Back, 40 to carry weight. Oh, we're getting attacked here. <laughs> it's so weird not having the sounds. Um, pop a med pack. Look, at I have 57 med packs. 50 57 and I've only played for a day. I bet you guys are low on stim packs. I'm wondering how the heck did he pull that off? And just just a, a while ago, like 12 hours ago, we went on a team raid at level 20 or 25 and we were taking out level 50 elite legendary mobs without dying because of this medic build. So it's huge. So I, there's a lot to go into here today and you guys will soon realize how awesome the potential of a medic on your team is or being the medic on your team and it also doesn't hurt to have two so where, where do we leave off here so it's all about the carry weight because you want to carry as much chems stim packs stim packs will actually weigh a pound each and you can reduce that a lot through having strength you're going to be healing your team you're going to be feeding your team quenching their thirst you're you're going to be curing their diseases all sorts of stuff you're going to take care of them they'll never have to worry about holding meds or food again clearing up weight for multiple weapons and ammo types allowing them to specialize as commandos snipers you know whatever uh, they want to play. They're not going to have to worry about their weight and maxing out strength like you do, but because of that, you reap the rewards from strength. Every point into strength gives you five carry weight. Then you have these things reducing the carry weight, adding 40 pounds of carry weight. Armor reduces uh, by 50%. Traveling pharmacy, 90% reduced chems, including stim packs. So, you know, 10 stim packs normally weighs 10 pounds. Now it only weighs one pound. So those 50 stim packs that you saw me holding on to there are uh, only weighing me down about five pounds, which is really nothing, especially considering how much carry weight I have 200 oh, wait that's not right these mongrels this is the worst spot to do a freaking video <laughs> oh my goodness and I got the effects turned off so I can't even tell I'm being hit okay so my actual carry weight is 255 currently at level 35 so those are the, the main ones the the last thing I'm probably gonna up is barbarian and that's gonna put me to 15 strength and that's just gonna give me a whole bunch of damage resistance now because your strength is so high that means you're going to be good with melee weapons as you see me here using a uh, what is this a super fist <laughs> I crank mobs out. <laughs> I was in PvP earlier, two-shotting people, my level. It's pretty fun. So you're still going to be a brawler 
and, and do, doing pretty good damage with melee. But that doesn't mean you can't be proficient with weapons, and we'll talk about that in a sec. Next thing, it's all about your charisma. So looking at this, bodyguards, you gain damage resistance for each teammate you have. That's just a must-have. I would recommend at least one point into this for anyone, because it goes 6, 8, 10, 12. So the first card is just as powerful as the last three cards. So one point for any, it's like essential for any build if you're playing with uh, friends. Just one point is good for now. Field Surgeon, Stimpax, and uh, Rataway work much more quickly. This is great for PvP. You just, whoop, you heal the whole team up um, because of team medic your stim packs now heal nearby teammates so if anybody's near you and you pop a stim pack on yourself it heals everybody in the team but then you combo that with first aid and now you're restoring 45 percent more health than normal and it works across the whole team so it's pretty awesome quack surgeon revive other players with liquor now this does save you a stim pack you're gonna have to carry booze but i have through hiker which reduces the weight of food and drinks by 90 percent. so the booze actually doesn't weigh that much at all so i always carry around like 10 whiskeys with me so i get a basically a free res without wasting a stim pack on my teammate um, another option is a card which gives you it's an intelligence it gives you a chance to basically 50 percent chance to not consume a stim pack on healing a teammate or might be in luck you, you could go that route but I, I like the quack surgeon plus it's just funny pouring booze into your friend's mouth it looks pretty hilarious I, I do travel agent because I am usually the party leader as the medic I kind of lead the team I like to always have a squad I'm always looking for a squad so I kind of generally dictate things and it, it's just a quality of life thing to uh, spend less caps moving around so these are the things I've been using leveling up my first cards that I picked were three into inspirational so levels two to four or one to four I got inspirational up from there I went with Pharma Pharma so I would find more stim packs for survival reasons. Pharma Pharma you can get rid of later. It's going to be useless because you can craft your own stim packs and you can just get rid of that. Plus you're not going to be finding that much kin containers all the time. So that's a temporary card for leveling. I thought it was pretty good. And then all the other stuff is kind of miscellaneous. You definitely want the green thumb so you can re harvest twice as much because you're going to be cooking lots of food for your team as well as find more meat. Now I don't want to put too many points into perception for this build so I just put one card because that's that's still pretty good. Now, I'm going to show you guys what the end game build looks like with the actual cards swapped out and what you should have, what specials you have by end game. We're going to go look at that in a sec, but while I'm still in game before I close this off, I want to show you how I got this many stim packs. Because of this perk here, chemist, you get double the quantity when crafting chems. Well, that is very important. So what you want to do is you want to get your teammates to give you your their chems and you know a little handful i usually don't have to ask for them anymore but in the beginning when we were leveling up i did so what am i looking for here diluted stim packs so while you can craft twice as much now you can craft stim packs with blood packs and then blood packs can also be crafted with tick blood so if you go to a certain point on the map i can show you here this forest we found lots of ticks in this area so you can get tick blood and you'll find blood packs throughout containers which pharma pharma is also nice to have craft them blood packs and then you can make stim packs two instead of one and it only uses antiseptic blood packs and steel very cheap and easy to make but that's not the, the the important part the important part is diluted you see when you dilute a stim pack normally you get two diluted stim packs what diluting something does is if a stim pack heals you for um 60 of your hp now you get two that do 30. this just ensures it so you're never going to overheal now you got to remember that they also heal 45 percent more so what would normally be 60 percent would now be 90 percent so the only you it, unless people are at 10% health, you're always overhealing. So you basically always want to dilute your stim packs because you're now healing for 45% of their HP. Anybody at half health on your team is going to get healed to full from a diluted stim pack, which is perfect. But now what you're doing with this diluted stim pack is you're turning one stim pack into four diluted stim packs. That's four times the amount of healing. You see your whole team at under half health, normally use one stim pack to heal the whole team, and you're overhealing and wasting it at stim pack. Instead, now you have four heals for the price of one. Your friends throw you some stim packs your way, some purified water, and you just dilute the crap out of all the stim packs. You can dilute 10 stim packs and have 40 diluted stim packs to heal your whole team with, and it's absolutely insane. 
Purified water is very easy to get. You can also make it if you have a water purifier or a water filter. Uh, water purifiers are pretty simple to make. I got four of them here. They keep popping out two, two every half hour or something. So um, I'm always stocked up on purified water, not a problem. So that's how I got all my diluted stim packs. I am never worried about my stim packs and my team is never dying and I'm always able to resurrect them. And the last thing I wanna say with this build, the heavy strength and the heavy charisma, you have so much carry weight, nothing actually weighs anything. And charisma being so high, actually charisma increases the rewards, the amount of rewards from missions and group activities so you're beating all these group activities with your friends you're doing all these missions with your friends and you're going to get more rewards than them and usually you get stim packs and chems as rewards and and food you're going to use those things to heal your party and you're going to have more of them to do so so you're never going to feel like you're you have you're you're using your only medicine on everybody you'll, you'll feel much better about it when you're getting more rewards so let's go online and look at the overall build all right guys here's the medic i'll have a link to this this down below so you can copy it have it up on another monitor while you're leveling up and playing follow you can kind of build this as you go and fill it in as you go so we're going to max out our strength 15 strength you guys saw that i was basically at the 13 the only difference here is i'm adding in those extra two points of barbarian four four damage resist for every strength that's going to give you a total of 60 damage resist you're going to be very tanky very very tanky not to mention you're dealing with ironclad which is an extra 50 damage and energy resist so that's 110 damage resist and 50 energy resist plus a hefty amount of HP, you have a good amount of HP points. Okay, so the next big ones here, Charisma, it's gonna be a little bit strange. You're gonna be swapping in, in and out cards. This is not exact, like Magnetic Personality at one, you kind of want it at two, but there wasn't enough room, but that's because anti, uh, anti Epidemic is actually something you're gonna pull off because your disease cures always cure a disease from nearby teammates too. This is really quality of life only. Uh, if everybody in your team's like, I got a disease, well, you tell them all to gather around you, you pop a, uh, a disease cure and everybody's disease is gone you only need to equip this card when you're going to cure their disease so you pop that in otherwise you would have magnetic personality on now why would you want this two charisma for each teammate so that gives you an extra six boosting you up to 21 well that doesn't allow you to put more cards on but it increases your overall drops and the the amount of cards the quality of cards that you can share with teammates so you can share perk cards with teammates but you're mo mainly most importantly you're adding in another 30 percent on top of your current charisma increasing your overall rewards from group quests by 30 percent so you know if you were to get three stim packs for a quest now you're getting four so that's huge overall having that magnetic personality is just going to boost your drops and you're using those drops to heal your team so it's going to make up for it philanthropist uh restore much more of your team's hunger and thirst when you eat or drink now if you guys saw my adhesive farm and you saw my farm there uh, my last video go check that out you can get so much food infinite food so you're gonna have so much food and water that you can just drink and eat for the whole team and your whole team's not gonna have to worry about doing that not to mention you have through hiker so it doesn't weigh anything so you could be the they don't have to worry about carrying any aids uh, any med medical supplies any food or drink and that's gonna free up them to be more specified or sp specialized in their roles so very good there <clears throat> squad maneuvers is a bonus it's a good card to just throw in there you can you run faster when part of a team you're kind of leading the charge as the medic oddly enough you're running in there with a melee weapon you can stand back with a rifle you can do either or but you're gonna be tanky if you take hits that's fine you're gonna heal yourself so you're kind of leading the charge you're the team leader you, you can definitely take the damage also you want to be able to sprint over to your teammates to revive them with quack surgeon throw some alcohol down their throat and they're back up so that's a really good combo to be able to run around and get to your teammates so i also threw marathon runner one point because sprinting consumes fewer action points so you're going to be able to sprint longer further and plus you have a decent amount of endurance to also sprint further so everything else we went over already on the build in game now intelligence you know i've heard people say oh you need so much intelligence in this game well let me show you something here every single crafting every single one of these is a crafting card or hacking uh, every single one of these cards can be sw swapped out at any point. Like, let's just say you wanted to hack something. Well, you equip, you unequip first aid, and then you equip your three hacking skills, you know? And now you can hack anything in the game. Take it back off, throw on your level three first aid, and you're back to normal. Well, let's just say you want to craft awesome guns, five star guns. Well, you go to, when do you craft guns? In town. So you take those three cards off, you put on your five star gunsmith. Um, <clears throat> fix it good. You want to repair something really well. Take off, 
take off first aid, throw on fix it good. You can swap all these things out in town when you're when you're on your little break, taking your 10 minute break to re regroup. All these cards can basically be just t swapped on. In terms of what you want on the field, there's plenty of times that you run into things you're like, let me scrap down. I just want to reduce my carry weight. So you're always going to want that equip because you're going to do it constantly, even when you're questing. Chemist, you can have it on there. You can take it off there. It doesn't really matter. If you run into a chem station, you'll quickly cook up some meds. That's fine. It's something that you could easily swap out if you would rather have, I don't know, 20 explosive damage and just use this in town. There you go. So it's something that's interchangeable. Honestly, I didn't find anything that I needed on here at all times other than first aid and scrapper. So I just left it there. No big deal. First aid, you definitely want that. Self-explanatory. Through hiker, you need that. Self-explanatory. And then last but not least, we have luck. So luck of the draw. I'm, I'm on the fence about this one. Some people say it's really good. Some people say it's really bad. I don't really know. And then I think the majority say it depends on what your weapon is. So it's people who have experienced it being really bad are using like sniper rifles. So sniper rifles break faster per shot because they do so much more damage. So if you're using luck of the draw on a melee weapon, an automatic weapon, you're going to notice procking it more often. I've heard people say they've been using it on a combat shotgun and they've played for over an hour and their weapon is still at like 90%. And as a medic, you, a shotgun's a very, very good weapon to have. As you have all that mobility, you have all that tankiness, you can get in the fray and just shotgun people down. So luck of the draw is good, plus melee weapons are also awesome because you have so much strength, you're just a bruiser. So you can just rip bot guys down with melee weapons and they're going to be repairing themselves, which is going to save you a lot of materials and heartache of having to go back to town or carrying multiple different weapon types. So for me, that's a must. Junk shield. Now, originally I had this at three and you saw in my game, it was at two. I actually have to get a whole new level one card and swap my two off because I don't want more than six luck. Instead of junk shield, which is carry junk to get 10 damage and energy resist, you're going with ironclad. I've added that to the build here. It's just so good because why would you get junk shield and increase your luck when luck doesn't really give you any good medic benefits. The endurance is going to give you five health for every endurance, so that's a total of 30 HP extra, but it's also going to allow you to sprint longer and drain less AP. And then it'll also give you access to something like Ironclad, which is essentially the exact same as Junk Shield, but it just continues on further. And it gives you that that tankiness. So it's it's very good overall. So last but not least is also a one very important card that I want to show you guys here that's going to complete the build. You never mutate from rads, and Rad Away never cures your mutations. So what this means is when you get mutated and you throw this on, you keep that mutation for forever. And you, you can only have one mutation at a time, so you're going to, you're going to find a certain mutation, Hold on to it and it'll never go away. Now, let's go look at what that mutation is. All right, I'll have a link to this page down below so you guys can look at all the different mutations in the game. But for my medic, there's a lot of different options. A lot of the mutations have downsides. Like you don't want to have this because you're gonna lose out on strength. There's a lot of them that take a big hit. Now, the one that works really well for the medic is herd mentality. It says it right in the name, playing on a team, playing on a herd. You have the herd mentality, plus two to all special stats when grouped, minus two to all special stats when solo. You will never, ever be playing solo. And here's the cool thing about the, the beneficial stats such as this and something like inspirational, which is a card that I highly recommend you level up with and you swap out once you're level 50. Put put something in like magnetic personality just to kind of min max your charisma a little bit higher. The These cards and that mutation all you need is someone in your team they don't have to be near you so a lot of the times like if I just feel like doing the main quest and I'm by myself or I barely rarely have ever done that but if I want to play by myself I still invite a friend to chill in my group because we can fast travel to each other to save each other caps we can use each other's uh, check uh, camps as checkpoints and I even though I'm not near them I still get the bonus exp and I don't get the negative downside to my mutation because they're in my party. So you, in fact, don't need to technically be playing with someone. You just need to have them in your group. And there are benefits to that. So adding plus two to all your stats is going to bring you up to 17, 7, 8, 17, 7, 6, 8. That's huge. Not to mention with magnetic personality, that's another six, bringing you up to a total of 23 charisma, giving you massive rewards from group events and quests. So that mutation is an absolute must lock in because you're going to also get 10 more carry weight. You're going to get better accuracy. You're going to get 10 more hit points, better stamina for sprinting, more action points for sprinting. You're going to get another 20 action points. You're going to get more luck, which increases the durability and quality of the drops that you're getting, and you're getting 
more drops because of charisma and that is boosted and then your intellect i honestly don't even know the passive effects for that it's not that good of a passive skill uh, as much as the others i think it affects like the overall durability of items you craft so when you craft something it'll be better either way it's gonna give you an extra 14 special which is huge bringing you up to a total of 70 special points all throughout your character as opposed to the normal person's 56. That is huge. Um, last thing I didn't really mention here that I want to cover was fire in the hole in Grenadier. You probably noticed that I had that slotted in there. Your explosives detonate with twice the radius. They're huge grenades and fire in the hole allows you to see the throwing arc and it increases the distance by 15%. Personally, I really like the grenades and you're constantly finding them. So what I do is I just throw grenades all the time. A, because it, it tags all the enemies. You do damage to everybody, you're guaranteed to get EXP from everybody so you're in big giant group situations just throw them grenades you're doing tons of damage it's it's just awesome uh you're clearing out your carry weight you're finding them you're throwing them you're finding them you're throwing them and it's fun so for me it's just something that i feel is very beneficial to have it's my play style that's something you could afford to swap off you could chuck those and have three points to distribute wherever else you want to improve your medic build now, some people might be going, well, you're not specialized in anything here. There's no commando perks. There's no, you know, shotgunner perks. There's no extra damage perks. Well, you're the healer. That's the whole point of this. Other people are not having to carry anything. They're not, they don't have to carry meds. They don't have to carry food. So now they have all this extra carry weight for two extra guns. They, you know, they don't have to pump points into strength because you're taking care of all that. And they can come with you as a more specialized commando shotgun specialist or enforcer, whatever you want to call it. They're going to be doing the damage. Another thing that's interesting about this game is you're going to find something like a rifle and you're going to use it, use it, use it, use it. And then next thing you know, after two, three hours, you're going to be completely out of 308 rounds. Then you're going to switch to a shotgun. You're going to use that for several hours. And then you're going to be out of ammo. And you're going to switch to something else like a pistol that's 44 rounds. Well, meanwhile, you're going to be using a melee weapon the entire time. So you're always going to run around with one ranged weapon and one melee weapon and they're going to be self-repairing themselves as as you attack so you don't need to carry any more than those two weapons when that wep when that ranged weapon runs out of ammo you just pick something else for the day or for for your play session you're going to be using weapons based off what your ammo is this is huge and way more beneficial than the other characters and your friends who are specializing in s a specific weapon type oh man i can never I'm, I'm specialized in rifles but i never have ammo for it you'll hear that complaint a lot they're they're just trying to pour all their resources into one type of ammo for one type of weapon or two types of ammo for said types of weapons you get the benefit of being able to use whatever weapon you want any weapon you want you're still doing decent damage you're throwing great damage with your grenades and nobody's ever dying so they're definitely maximizing their efficiency and if there's a certain weapon that you're like you know you can donate your ammo to someone else because it doesn't matter what weapon you use you can go with a shoddy and give out your 308 rounds you can go with your 308 rounds and give out your shoddy shells you know um so you're much more versatile on your team and you're still loading out tons of damage because you're so beefy you can get in there and do melee damage you can get in there and use whatever weapon you want you could use a heavy weapon and once that's dry out of ammo you just grab something else so it's a very versatile role and trust me i, I would i want to argue to say that i've been doing the most damage on my teams thus far um because of this versatility and not to mention i can keep myself alive <laughs> I'm, I have literally infinite stin packs with this build and I'm never worried. My teammates still have that scare moment where uh, they have to get near me to get heals and they have very scarce amount of med packs or stin packs. Boom. So there it is, everybody. Those are the benefits. You're definitely going to be able to hoard a lot with this. You're going to get tons of rewards. You're going to be a team player. You're going to be, everyone's going to love playing with you. There's so many good benefits to playing a high strength, high charisma medic class. And I think you're going to really enjoy enjoy it. I'm playing it right now and I'm having so much fun with it and I'm also a hoarder so I love being able to just have so much carry weight, carry so much stuff and it doesn't even affect my carry weight. Not to mention that I keep my team alive and we're able to just kill anything in the game that's 20 30 levels higher than us it's so much freaking fun every group needs a medic so maybe you should consider being one and it doesn't hurt to have two because you're just doubling up on heals take care of the team that much better and like i said the medic isn't suffering from 
mega loss of damage. It really isn't. It's pretty strong overall. Boom. So there you guys go. Let me know what you guys think of this medic build down in the comments below. What would you change on this medic build? Would you take the grenade out? Would you add in something else? Is there something on this build that you think is missing? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments below. If you guys enjoyed this video, please be sure to smash that like button. And if you want more tips and tricks, be sure to subscribe. I got plenty more ideas and things to show you guys in the future here. All right, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a fantastic day and I will see you in the next video. Bye now.